Welcome to our Waldner Lab Cafe online. And thanks a lot that so many people are interested in this amazing project. My name is Alexander Biller, and I'm looking forward to share a lot of inspiration with you. Our topic today, Life Science Factory, the place where magic happens. And the new Life Science Factory opened their doors in January 2022, one year ago and combines great architecture with a maximum of flexibility and exciting possibilities. It promotes research and development in Göttingen for innovative bio and medical technologies that have clear practical applications. The Life Science Incubator offers founders, startups, scientists, and researchers everything they need from a single source, all at one location, open offices, a wide range program of mentoring and events, the Makers Factory prototyping workshop and configurable S1 laboratories. The motto of the Life Science Factory is concentrate on your research and let us take care of the rest. And we have fantastic speaker today, impulse number one, is about what are the lessons learned in the first year with Dr. Jan Borkowski, site director, Life Science Factory. Jan has a background in strategy and innovation consulting, as well as in running industrial operations. He has a passion for helping people develop themselves and their idea. So he's the perfect person developing such a startup place. Impulse number two, is focusing on the question, how can we create flexible lab spaces for unknown users? Thorsten Rosenkranz, director Eurolabors, and Thorsten is an architect, laboratory planner, and DGNB auditor. He is 49 years old and has been with Eurolabor since 2007. He has been a director of Eurolabors AG since 2012 and is the office manager for the main location in Kassel. Impulse number three is about why should an attractive startup place have to be smart, but also wow. And to answer this question, we will make a virtual live tour through the building together with Jan and Thorsten. At the end, we have a Q&A session. So if you have questions, please write it in the chat and we can answer them. So I would say, let's start. Let's know more from the experts behind the project. Take a good cup of coffee and be inspired. So Jan, it's your turn. Uh, great, Alex, thank you. Thank you for your very kind words uh, and thanks for, uh, for having me and for um, giving us the opportunity to uh, talk a bit about uh, the Life Science Factory and what we have uh, um, gone through and experienced over the last uh, year uh, now that we are into our second year of operation. Um, as I said, moving into the second year of operating uh, uh, the Life Science Factory here in our premises in uh, in Göttingen. Maybe to uh, go back to the start, what is it that we as a Life Science Factory set out to be and still want to be? Uh, in simple terms, we want to be a state-of-the-art life science incubator and have this vision uh, to, to establish and promote Göttingen as a location of choice for life science startups. Um, and uh, so eventually uh, when when people say okay boston or Göttingen, it doesn't matter then then we'll have uh, made it uh, in terms of uh, being an attractive place for startups um, that's where we want to uh, want to go and want to support and we basically uh, follow that vision with a twofold purpose one is that we want to foster entrepreneurial spirit within the academic community within uh, uh, sciences, life sciences in particular, um, really make that uh, visible and, and attractive option, attractive career option to start a business, to uh, start a spin-off, um, uh, to really make uh, your, your research, uh, transform that, translate that into a business idea. And the second uh, uh, purpose is basically where that has already happened, where this entrepreneurial spirit has, has sparked, then uh, support the startups and spin-offs that has been uh, um, 
come into life from there in the life science sector with everything they need with infrastructure physical infrastructure that's a focus of what we uh, look at today uh, but a lot more than that also it's it's a programmatic support it's mentoring it's uh, access to networks uh, um, access to finance a lot of other uh, topics and activities like that we do that in in Göttingen um, in the middle of Germany um, uh, historically significant uh, scientific hub um, over 30,000 students, over 6,000 researchers here. We have four Max Planck Institutes, four universities, the German Primate Center. So lots of uh, uh, research excellence, scientific excellence. Um, there we have uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, scientific industry as well. Um, uh, Sartorius as one example, Evotech and others as well. Um, but compared to the uh, scientific excellence um, that is here and that uh, the scientific knowledge and the, the progress that has been generated here, uh, it's not yet matching. So there's lots of room for actually translating um, the, the, the research um, and uh, uh, especially in the life sciences that's happening in Göttingen into startups and into companies. Um, and that's what we want to do uh, to support and to help uh, on that. By providing um, all our services in this newly built uh, life science factory. So as Alex said, we moved into our premises uh, a good year ago in uh, beginning of 2022. Um, the total of over 3000 square meters um, where we have, uh, we look at the, uh, the bottom at the start and the event space that is very flexible usable for uh, for events up to 200 persons but you can also use it um, as a meeting room uh, uh, you can have a table football uh, uh, tournaments there so all kinds of, of different activities uh, investor talks and so on um, on the ground floor as well back here uh, we have a, a prototyping makers factory where you can uh, build prototypes um, with a variety of 3D printers and other uh, equipment. Um, on the uh, second floor here, uh, we have a, a co-working area with uh, different desks that you can access and just use uh, for your office needs, uh, meeting rooms, uh, phone booth to really have a, a, a quiet uh, a time and area to, uh, to have a call. And then the top two floors, it's a total of 1700 square meters of wet lab, fully equipped um, and fully serviced. And the idea is to have an open lab um, where you basically, um, as, a, as a startup, rent a bench or uh, several benches in the open lab and then have access to a variety of uh, equipped functional labs, cell cultures, and so on. Um, and we completely service and uh, support um, those um, uh, lab space, same as we do with the Makers Factory. What that does mean in, in, in practice, um, we talk about that a bit uh, later in more detail. Um, the Life Science Factory itself is... Um, located in the uh, newly built uh, Sartorius quarter um, in, uh, in the center of Göttingen. This is the area of the former uh, factory grounds of uh, Sartorius um, and they moved uh, towards uh, the, the, the fringe of Göttingen and now this area had become free and is now um, established and developed uh, and following the motto learn, launch, live. Um, and the learn part is covered by the so-called Gesundheitscampus, which is, which is a, a joint endeavor between the university hospital here in, uh, in Göttingen and uh, one of the universities where you can basically study everything from uh, midwifery to uh, a medical engineering. Um, we have uh, as a second part of, of the motto here in the, in the quarter is launch. That is our um, our focus that we help launch companies and then live. Um, so there's uh, apartments here. There's um, hotel here there's a, a bars and cafes um, so really some some good um, vibe if you like a uh, quality of life in the in the quarter um, and there's also quite a life science cluster um, you can even see that in the color so every building that has red bricks is uh, more or less a life science focus um, uh, apart from us it's uh, Otto Bock who is here as a world market leader in technical orthopedics um, it was a patient care center the Gesundheits campus um, and also we are um, located really conveniently. So just a 10 minute uh, walk uh, by foot to the main university campus. And also it's just 10 minutes to uh, the university hospital. So really you are in the in the center of it, which is one of the benefits that we can offer um, the startups that are, uh, that are joining us and uh, that we can host. Um, others include um, 
uh, uh, that you can really start quickly in fully equipped facilities. Um, Alex was mentioned that, uh, mentioning that already, as so we have a, a, a well-equipped um, safety level one uh, lab infrastructure um, with uh, different areas. Again, we will have a look at them uh, later in more detail. Uh, we have flexible uh, rates, um, so you can really flexibly book um, uh, your need a bank or if you're growing more benches and you can change uh, your membership model every month uh, depending on what you need and what is your current need and you can start really quickly um, so ideally if uh, regulatory approval is uh, uh, um, is there you can start within 48 hours after signing uh, signing the contract you can uh, literally be at the bench with the pipette in your hand uh, and by that we try to address uh, two of the of the pressing needs that uh, startups have because startups uh, usually don't have time and don't have money and if they need lab space then they can't access lab space anymore or can use it in, in their former research institution for example um, then building their own lab um, and uh, that takes lots of time and lots of money uh, while uh, we offer them quick access to a fully equipped lab with just paying a monthly membership fee. Um, we offer access to life science network of industry um, experts, uh, experienced entrepreneurs, scientists, we give the opportunity to gather entrepreneurial know-how, learning from people who've been there, who've done it, uh, uh, successful founders, uh, mentors, experts on a national and international level. We give an environment uh, to try stuff out, really a sandbox environment um, with the uh, Makers Factory, for example. We can really do prototyping and even that, just do it for a day. You can even get that by a day pass there. And uh, importantly, we don't invest in the startups that are with us. So uh, we just provide the infrastructure and, and the support, but we know people who want to invest. Uh, and so we, we are networking um, uh, those and, and help connect to investors, to funds uh, that are there. Um, and also we have uh, uh, um, initiate or helped initiate a, a fund that is also um, supported by um, by the state of Lower Saxony uh, here to invest in startups. Um, all of that, the work that is beyond infrastructure is what we um, uh, subsume or, or put together into a startup support program, um, which is the, uh, for example, an ELSA program, the Entrepreneur Life Science Accelerator, which we uh, have in collaboration with Fraunhofer and with Helmholtz Munich, um, where every year about uh, 15 teams uh, for half a year um, meet in several sessions, uh, live sessions uh, for two days uh, with uh, coaches, with experts, um, learn from each other, get homework, um, uh, come back after a few weeks uh, uh, and develop really their idea and their, their business. Um, and all of that ends then towards the end of the year in a life science pitch bowl where um, each startup presents their idea, their plan, their business, um, also to a wider audience and to investors. So really accelerate uh, uh, entrepreneurs uh, in their life science endeavors. We have a, a series of, uh, uh, of activities called Startup Deep Dives, uh, life science specific lectures that are on regulatory affairs, on investor relations, uh, on IP, uh, on a lot of relevant topics. We offer workshops from a business model canvas, uh, simple uh, simple workshops up to 3D printing uh, uh, knowledge. And we have our own uh, founders uh, conference, the Life Science Startup Day um, uh, every year um, where uh, we have uh, lectures from experts, uh, from politics, from science. Uh, we give uh, startups the, the stage to present themselves. Variety of partnering formats on top of that fireside chat. So all kinds of, of networking opportunities, of input opportunities, of programmatic support that we can offer um, uh, the, the startup that are with us. And uh, I mentioned that with flexible membership models uh, from a community uh, ticket as, as the base, basically, which just gives you a membership in the factory community on our uh, platform. We have a, a virtual platform to exchange, um, to get information and um, to share knowledge. Um, and then up, for example, if you have the all-inclusive uh, lab uh, membership, you have access to uh, um, the lab with your own bench and then access to the um, functional labs by just booking your slot, which is Money-wise is included. You just need to fix your time uh, there, and you can access the co-working space, a flex desk there, um, and uh, start prototyping in the makers' factory. And there, if you don't need lab for all your employees or all the team members, maybe for one, it's, it's enough to have 
for just a, a co-working uh, a place then you can have a co-working uh, basic membership same as with makers factory if you just want to focus on there so again flexibly you can just uh, uh, pick and pack if you like uh, the level that you want and this is the the, the model that we have been operating for the last uh, a good year um, being here in the um, uh, in our facilities here now um, as, as Alex mentioned he, he asked me what are some key lessons uh, that you've learned over this this time um, and uh, one uh, I would think is, is really confirmed what we set out uh, to to do and and really confirmed itself is flexibility is king and um, we have a high need for for adaptable uh, infrastructure specifically in the lab because we don't know yet um, which uh, startups with companies will be with us uh, in the next months um, uh, or who will join us what are their needs so we need to be really flexible and that and uh, uh, there have, has been put a lot of thought into flexibility setting up and designing a life science factory and that really pays off um, we set out to foster exchange um, uh, through a variety of programs i was just mentioning about that but also through the uh, architecture have an open space architect to an open space lab so that people really interact and can learn from each other uh, support each other create new ideas and that is really uh, uh, working now and developing very very nicely um, and what really confirmed also is the building itself does not make a life science factory it is one important factor but it is by far not everything because as a startup you would need a community you need support through events through the platform i was mentioning through communication activities programmatic support presence on trade shows uh, trade fairs, a whole variety of things so the building itself just putting a building somewhere does not make a life science factory or a startup a, a, a hub or a life science hub if you like it needs a lot more around that maybe three points um what we would think next time we, when we start another life science factory um what would we do differently? Uh, one is to think about is indeed storage space. So have more individual storage space space for for each uh, startup. Um, it's quite limited in our current uh, premises, and we see that uh, each startup really needs uh, a place to put their stuff uh, and to uh, uh, store uh, uh, things. Even though some uh, some things are used uh, jointly, still we need more storage space. Um, supply of uh, lab gases and maybe. Uh, Awesome. we'll talk about that later a bit more detail but we've uh, here established like a center supply for the whole building um, and uh, I think uh, next time we'll probably uh, change that to close uh, having a supply closer to the lab benches individual lab benches um, to uh, give us even more flexibility and last point is um, have more functional labs as cell cultures because they are uh, very well in uh, very much in, in use and in demand uh, incubators as well um, so provide them more from the start we have luckily flexibly enough that we can adjust um, but uh, we now currently have for uh, for our tenants four uh, cell culture labs uh, and we definitely would need more so that is something I or we would change um, when starting another um, life science factory so that as a quick overview um, of uh, of what we do here over the last uh, year and um, uh, what we've learned so far. And uh, yeah, with that, uh, Alex, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jan. And uh, thanks um, a lot for this great overview and um, also the, the lessons learned. Um, what's your personal highlight of being located in the Satoris Quartier? Um, or maybe, oh, uh, that's, that's, that's a good one. So maybe three things. So one is it is really nice to, to be in a, in a quarter which is developing. So, so you can uh, frame that with, and it's something new. And uh, uh, what, what I really uh, liked end of last year, wine bar opened, um, um, which is uh, quite nice to have a, have, a, uh, have a really good wine bar um, close to the facility. What I also like is that uh, just takes me about uh, 10 minutes by bike from, from home. To, to get here so it's really uh, close close by well located so maybe that's two three highlights I would have yeah <laughs> okay that, that's great so um, then I would hand over to you Torsten with the focus on the lab spaces okay um, I also thank you Alexander for your kind introduction of myself and um, 
the short presentation of, of our office. Um, I, I will add our office is located in Kassel. It's a city about 50 kilometers south of Göttingen, also in the center of Germany. And um, we also at the end have another office in Berlin, in the capital. Um, the question you asked to me, uh, how to create flexible lab spaces for unknown users is very interesting for us because as, as architects and uh, laboratory planners, we are used to receive fixed boundary conditions for our tasks. With these specifications, we can find the best solution with the involvement of all parties. The boundary conditions influence the project in many ways. For example, from the user's point of view, not also the, the intended activities in the laboratory and the entire building, but also the required area is important. The operator mainly considers the logistic and, and other terms. Um, the logistic for, for supply and the disposal of, of laboratory materials. From the safety point of view, the regulatory requirements for the laboratory work have uh, to be taken in account. And another point from an urban planning perspective, the possible, possible footprint of the site is important. And uh, for the client at the end, best research, research results have the greatest significance. And this is the basis for the whole for the whole project. Depending on the planning, the laboratories look different in the end. And during the planning, individual needs and requirements are taken in account in order to provide the best conditions for the researchers. On the pictures, uh, you can see various projects which we are realized on uh, by our office during the last years. And as, as laboratory planners, it's, it's our duty to talk to everyone who is involved in the project and stay in contact throughout the entire planning and construction phase. Often, often we, we are confronted with changing requirements after the realization by new users. Therefore, we define three different groups of clients. First, the virtual user. Second, the real users. And third, the lab manager or site director, um, he is named Jan Bokowski for the, for the life science factory. On the sketch, I will explain you to the, to the main conditions of this project on the footprint, uh, the construction of a narrow long building uh, with four stories is, is possible. It ends with the block edge. We've seen a, a, a photo, a picture of it from, from Jan Bokowski away to the internal structure of the building has uh, to be guaranteed. Inside the building, we find open spaces with various functions like private labs, open space in the lab zone, meeting zones, office, and so on. The different requirements of the users and the operators are, are mapped in anticipated workflows. For a better understanding and, and a clear structure, we have marked the main functions of the areas with different colors. Green represents the use uh, as, an, as an office. Blue marks the, the lab areas. Based on this structure, we created various layouts and possible of possible laboratories for the life science factory. This example, you can see a possible combination of office and meeting spaces in a laboratory area. And uh, for better working conditions, the area is separated into open spaces and private labs. The version two, the entire floor is divided into laboratory space and office areas. The importance of the communication area is emphasized here. In version three, the laboratories are combined in a linear way interrupted by meeting and communication zones. And on version four, you see another possibility possible example how to structure the area. Another part is the service supply. For the building services, we developed a concept which allows a maximum of flexibility. The access to the technical supply in the laboratory are available in fixed regular distances. Starting from, from this supply point, lines for media and gas can be laid to, to every other 
every other point in, in the lab, really every other, other point before the realization, the, the type and amount of gases is determined by, by consulting with the, with the former, I have to say, former users. This picture shows one of the laboratory floors it's divided in different areas to facilitate the working process. And it explains nearly the version four, the support and facilitate communication among researchers. The floor is designed to be transparent and open instead of, ha of having separate laboratories with walls and closed doors. And if no private labs are needed, the entire floor can be an open space, totally. This model of interaction shows the complex complexity of, of collaboration between the different parties of, of the planning as, as laboratory planners, uh, which we are. We have a central function in all phases of planning and implementation. In the early phase, we, we gather all the information and uh, coordinate the planning to, to the others, for example, if the user needs a, a separate storage space, we determine the corresponding, corresponding surface together with the architect. Or if a user needs uh, fume hots, we calculate the air volume um, and pass the information to, to the other planners. The development of floor plans is an important planning step, another important planning step in the entire process, because these, these plans define the regulatory boundary conditions, and we assign different uses to the area, office, laboratory, and, and meeting area, I mentioned it. Then we are dedicated to a basic model of the uh, lab area. The basic module contains all essential functions in a systematic structure, the positioning of the ceiling grid and the zoning of the installation levels. After that, media columns are mounted on the ceiling grid. So the user can take the supply from there. And for more flexibility, the media columns can be moved along the ceiling grid on, on the whole way. So they are always available at any location on the lab. If, if we have fixed installations for, for the use of, of sinks, for example, and fume hots, um, they have um, a different uh, party of, of the, the whole area and uh, other elements um, can be easily moved from one point to another. Storage space hang on the grid, depending on the demand, we can reduce them or extend them, depends on the user. And at the end, laboratory equipment is completed by rolling containers under the tables. All the elements um, I told about it, can be arranged in different ways. Now to the realization, here we see the a floor. It's, I think it's the third floor um, of the life science factory in, in an early stage of construction. You see the ceiling grid just fixed on it, um, but in an open space, the waste water routings um, like fixed points and the underfloor heating, it's shown there. The ceiling grid is installed at, at a high of two meters 80 and supports the HVAC installation, uh, the holy uh, technical supply, and also the, the electrical installation. The transfer points are marked at regular distances. In this case, at the end, every medium is used. And here you see a first overview um, at the end of the construction between the open space on the right side, um, it's, it's the, uh, the east side, and the private labs on the left side. We operate with the flexibility. We have here an, an, a good example of a change of use. The user wanted to have a private lab with lockable doors after construction, the, the, whole, um, the whole floor. So a, a private lab was separated from the open area with a prefabricated system and the media supply was established within only two days. And here we see the wall elements, the rest of it, they are stored in an extra room and uh, are available at any time 
for another another um, new wishes or uh, requirements. Then, at the end, uh, the transfer points of the media on the ceiling grid are connected with quick couplings and flexible host connections. In summary, I can say concerning the, the growing importance of, of mob mobility and rapidly changing conditions of work and environment, we need a maximum of flexibility in laboratory planning and construction together with those involved in the planning, we have established a modern future-oriented concept for flexible laboratories, which can easily be modified without interrupting the operation of the whole area. All in all, the key point of our concept is a change in interaction. The laboratory adapts to the user and not the user to the laboratory. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer some questions. Thanks a lot, Thorsten. And in the chat, uh, there, there are already two questions. I would start with the first one. And how did you approach and set the ratio of lab to office space? Can you say something to that? Or also, Jan, can you say something about the ratio lab and an office? Um, yeah, yeah happy, happy, to, happy to start. So uh, <laughs> what we have is we have... Um, uh, we have a total of 90 benches uh, in on in the lab on the two floors um, and we have about 45 uh, uh, places in the uh, in the co-working area area so roughly two to one lab to office um, but as it is a, a flexible concept um, it's not like fixed desk but it's flexible desk that can be used flexibly uh, also over time lab bench that is my lab bench and only i use it so that's fixed to a person or two persons actually, but the uh, the the desks uh, in the co-working area are actually more flexible because they are used as as they are needed. Yeah, uh, we but saw the, that the in, in but, many but the co-working co area is in the um, in the second floor. Exactly. Yeah, that is yeah. Uh, it's yeah. on a different floor and, than the uh, than the lab. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So Jan, you have a ratio fifty percent uh, nine about ninety benches in lab. Uh, lab mm -hmm. benches and about 45 um, mm -hmm. workspaces, so 50% of the lab space around that. In, in other mm -hmm. projects, I can answer that, we see a ratio between 40% um, co-working space and 60% lab space up to 30% um, co-working space and 70% lab space. It, it depends on, on what we should do and on, on the lab work also but i would say in general between 30 to 70 up to 50 yeah up to like like here um 50 percent of of um, workspace and 100 percent lab space about that and uh, torsten do you have yeah uh, no it, it yeah um i have no generally answer it depends every time it depends on the on the on the real users mm -hmm. What is their workflow, and um, what what is their their, their main um, main goal to um, to to work um, uh, microbiological, for example, in directly in in a um, in a um, closed lab in a in a private lab, for example, and then uh, to do the documentation um, on I, I've shown it on the on the east side of the, um, the life science factory or in a co-working area, one, one floor um, down. It, it, it depends. Um, I think we, we couldn't say uh, a, a general rate. Um, yeah, we yeah. have to ask. No? Yeah, okay. Then I would say, let's um, start with the live tour. Um, we will walk through the building together with Jan and Thorsten. And if you have questions, please write it directly in the chat and then we can uh, answer them in the right rooms and locations. So uh, Jan, um, do you want to share your screen for the live? Tour? Yeah, I'm uh, happy to do that. Um... And then, so here we are. This is a bit of an uh, uh, aerial view um of the life science uh, uh 
uh, factory in the uh, Sartorius quarter. So uh, what you see there actually was uh, last summer. So there's still a bit of construction going on. So you see here the life science factory uh, uh, building. This is the Gesundheits campus uh, that we have also here in the so so-called Schetterhalle, where there is the, the teaching. And then you see some of the apartments and the hotel around that. And if you just have a look over here, over there is the university main campus, as I said, just down the street um, in, in Göttingen. But if we now enter the life science factory, you enter um, in, in our uh, uh, foyer, um, see our uh, corporate color, bright and shiny, um, uh, and are uh, welcomed um, by our team uh, and then you can uh, walk through and we have a quick look here at the uh, event area this is uh, set up for an event already um, so with a, a stage and uh, the media technology and everything you would need you have a little kitchen uh, uh, back here but this area is also very flexible usable um, uh, you've seen the picture earlier uh, with just some some chairs and uh, um, so you can use it as a um, as a working area for meetings for smaller meetings um, maybe also for smaller meetings uh, you see there's flexible walls in here um, that you can have smaller meeting rooms so you can either have the whole space or smaller meeting rooms um, and that and that is available uh, both to uh, to the startups that are with us but also to activities conferences programmatic support that we offer and that we do as a life science factory for example the life science startup day which is this stage uh, is, is forward also for for other activities now now that we are back here at the uh, uh, foyer we would um, take either the stairs or the elevator up to uh, the lab. Um, so we are now at the top floor here uh, entering. Um, uh, and when you enter, uh, you see this is where, where the codes are uh, stored. Um, and then uh, we go into uh, the open space. You've just seen that a bit on, on Torsten's uh, pictures. So you see the um, benches uh, that are here and the um, functional labs and the number of functional labs um, that we have uh, um, in the middle uh, of the building. Uh, and now just have a closer look at uh, one of uh, the benches. So if you rent a bench, um, this is basically what you get, uh, one bench in the open uh, space lab, uh, storage, uh, a bit of a storage facility it belongs to that little fridge. Um, uh, rack to organize and to help you organize a set of pipettes um, and everything that is supplied or needs to be supplied through those media columns, Torsten, that you were mentioning. Um, and maybe you want to elaborate a bit on that. You're muted. Yes, of course. Thank you. At the end of construction, um, we, we, we had a plan, um, a, a design on, on which part every media column has to be fixed. But um, in reality, it was totally different. Huh? And be because of the flexible cables of everything, of gas and, uh, and electricity, it was possible to, um, to, to, to fix it on, on, the, on the right side, which the real user wanted to have it. Huh? And, and so the, the adaption in, during operation, I, I, I told it, um, was, was was um, every time uh, all right, and I would say not only because of uh, Waldner um, uh, of the Waldner format here, um, the um, craftsmen of Waldner um, they they got familiar with the with the, uh, the new idea of um, of the flexibility, huh? and um, they uh, they find solutions to to um, adapt the construction at the end of the or to the wishes of the users. Exactly, and one one adaptation that you were mentioning uh, already as well uh, is uh, putting in a private lab here. You see that so basically that is just some uh, some walls that are put onto that grid, flexible walls you can put in uh, over a weekend and then just cordon off a bench or two. The basic idea of the life science factory is to have an open lab to foster the exchange, as I said earlier, but sometimes investors or others say, no, we need a private lab. We need something uh, to, uh, to actually not have a technology that is already developed uh, or IP that is uh, proper proprietary um, that that is not shared and we can uh, offer a solution for that as well and just cordon off some benches in forms of a private lab. 
Um, so, now, so, if a we... question, so a question, yes, Jan, please. so you, you, as a one man startup, you, you rent a bench there, then mm -hmm. you have a bench. If you grow, then you have um, a second person and a third person, you can rent more benches um, exactly. in this area. And when I, I grow and I want to have my private lab, I can use the separate walls. Is that right? Uh, that that is correctly but also if you grow and you still want to have a bigger team within the open lab that's perfectly fine you just add benches as you need um, and also um, if you uh, sometimes have because a project runs out for you or maybe you have uh, as a startup not uncommon financing issues you can also uh, scale down and say okay for for the next six months i don't need a bench more so you can uh, uh, book additional benches but also reduce them that's the flexibility that's there okay cool and then there is the general equipment and shared device and so on. but if i need something specific is that also possible uh, basically you can put whatever you want oh, i'm going back to the benches now um, basically you can put if you need specific equipment and that is yours you can put that on your bench and what is on your bench is yours and back here you see there's some uh, some equipment here that uh, startup has put on their own benches um, that is their pieces of equipment they can use um, however um, we have quite a lot of um, equipment that we offer um, with in the functional labs if we look for example here at a cell culture um, that is uh, equipped with the safety bench with the incubators um, when we look around a, a fridge there um, the microscope um, all the other uh, stuff and you can use that you just book your slot within our uh, software and say okay i need the incubator for for a week let's put it that way or i need the safety bench for four hours uh, on tuesday afternoon you just book that uh, uh, and then it's yours uh, and that is included in your rent so it's a first come first serve um, a model uh, which is that and, and do i need so a, li a driver license for this machine <laughs> and equipment <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we 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 help you um, uh, get accustomed to them. Uh, to, uh, to that, we don't do full trainings on those machines. That is because usually the um, the, the the people that come to us are, have lab experience and have worked in, in a lab already quite a while before. Um, but obviously, general training we, um, we we give some some introduction, and that we also have regular training sessions with external experts to come in and and uh, share some tips and tricks uh, for specific machinery uh, but then uh, it's it's up to you how to work work with them exactly i would i would add you see over there over the um, the ceiling grid um the um, the service supplier and um it's it's sure that there are certain limits in in in, in the whole lab because um or it's it's not possible to change a microbiological lab like uh, we find here uh, in a wet chemistry lab yeah? um, you have uh, per per floor you have um, four fume hoods um, it's it's possible to um, to to adapt uh, i think three more of them but but that's then the end yeah but in in, in the whole in the, in the general planning it, it was um, defined to to one part of um, of investigation and in this in this um, yeah, uh, boundary you can do everything and maybe to to continue uh, alex on on your question with regards to equipment uh, we have a, a room here called a uh, special equipment where we have a set of uh, specific microscopes and a few other pieces of equipment and if there is need uh, for uh, several startups to say, okay, actually this piece of equipment or this machinery would help us, let's say, for certain protein works or for certain activities or bioreactor or, or be it uh, whatever it, be, uh, be, it may be. Um, there's also the option if we see there's a need uh, across several startups that we uh, uh, buy additional equipment or provide additional equipment for everyone to use. And so that option is always available. Now you see here uh, uh, laminar flows. Um, Again, a second uh, uh, cell culture uh, here. This one also talking about equipment, we are able to provide uh, an incusite. You see the one unit up here in the uh, uh, in the incubator. So real uh, time uh, uh, live imaging system for uh, for incubator. Really quite a nice piece of equipment, um, which usually startups don't don't really have access to. Um, 
And uh, here we have uh, the only difference between the two lab floors in terms of equipment. So they basically look alike and are set up and structured alike. The only difference is that here on, we are currently at the third floor, uh, the focus is on protein um, uh, uh, work, which uh, here you see the, the two actors um, set up. And uh, one floor down the focus in this area is also on PCR. So we have different set of equipment there, but the same, but for the rest of the floor, the, it looks the same, be it here for media preparation or the uh, high precision scales, again, to be used uh, by, by everyone. First come, first serve, just book your slot. And here are the benches that you can rent. Here's one of the uh, rooms our uh, lab manager likes to call the luxury room, which is the, the, the freezer and centrifuge center. So we have minus 115, minus 80 uh, uh, freezers here right in, in the lab floor so uh, just a short walk uh, over from the benches uh, where can uh, i can store uh, my things we have the ultra centrifuge and other equipment here um, and um, we now come to here which is the um, cleaning uh, service or cleaning kitchen and that's actually one of the services that we offer to the startup. So you do all the work yourself, the scientific work, uh, the pipetting, everything. But we, uh, what is included in our offer is the autoclavation, everything of the, um, of the trash, of the, um, uh, uh, of the dishes, the dishwashing, all of that is uh, providing ice and so on. All of that is uh, what we offer as a service within our uh, cleaning service. So that is what we do with Life Science Factory personnel, all the rest needs to be done by the startups uh, teams and uh, and personnel and, and, and Jan, then, how do you handle the consumables uh, for the um, for the lab space so if i need a pipette or something is that what i have to order by myself or is it uh, is there a system um, there's uh, they're actually quite nice. There's uh, two systems um, uh, we offer uh, for that. One is you're always free, obviously, to, to order however you want to order it. We offer access to an, an online shop um, where we can um, give uh, special conditions uh, to buy uh, most of the consumables um, um, through us, uh, which is also good in terms of availability um uh, uh because then it's not just one single startup buying a, a single pack of something but uh, but there's the bigger purchasing power behind and also we have and i'm, I'm happy to show that in a minute uh, we have a vending machine on the floor for the most um most used consumables um uh, uh it's on the other end of the uh, lab so when we go there on, on our way back I'll, I'll show that um to you just a quick look here at the material lab uh, same story um that we uh uh, that we, we had with uh, the cell cultures. And then again, you get an idea of, of uh, the openness, lightness, the loftiness of the whole, uh, of the whole place. Um, safety uh, showers and everything in place. Green floor, uh, which uh, just gives it a bit, bit of color, but is also uh, not only the floor is green, but also the energy uh, that we have uh, is green, the district treating and so on. So probably, I would say it's probably one of the most sustainable ways of running a lab uh, uh, currently. And we see that, especially now with the energy uh, costs are going up, that uh, we have a very low energy usage uh, for a lab of that size. And how do you handle chemicals? Um, we'll have, uh, so, so we take care of the, uh, 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 of getting rid of the chemicals. Uh, and obviously the startups need to uh, discuss with us, with our lab management, uh, uh, when they bring uh, specific chemicals in. However, we, uh, especially when it's critical chemicals, we only have uh, small amounts so that, uh, so that works well. And we have some chemical storage in the basement um, as well. Okay. Okay. Another question. Um, is it loud in this open lab space? Um, no, so far I would have to say it's it's concentrated uh, silence. Maybe some laughing in between, but it's not uh, it's not too loud. Um, so in in real life, um, it's a good working atmosphere. Um, Great. And say. how do you handle confidentiality in in general? Because mm -hmm. everything is open. Exactly, that is the whole idea, and uh, that is the, um, uh, the 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 point that people 
sign up to uh, when they when they join a life science factory. Uh, it is about sharing. It is about ex uh, exchange of ideas. Uh, if you want to, uh, or if you have to hide something, so to say, or to put it, then you really need to put it in uh, in a, a, a private lab. I'm I'm just walking through Torsten. You just uh, jump in if you want to highlight a certain point, uh, um, because then I'm just. Thank walking. you very much. You, you are explaining very well. <laughs> so I um, I add when I find something different or you. Thank you. Yeah, I look I look to the chat and there's a question. Um, do you have a chemical storage area? Uh, yes, we do in the basement. Um, okay. Obviously, with with the safety uh, uh, um, and all the safety measures that you would have. So in the lab itself, just uh, very small amounts. Okay. Okay. And another question: Can I go through this nice lab by myself using the web address? Yes, you may. It is if you go to our uh, life science um, website, uh, life science uh, uh, minus factory de, and then you find the um, uh, the tool there. Um, you can take the tool yourself as well. Exactly. Um, this is the the vending machine I was mentioning uh, uh, before. Um, uh, Alex, to your question, how do we provide consumables for the for the most common consumable piper tips and other things? You can just uh, get from the vending machine, scan your code, then it's put on your monthly bill, uh, and then you can just get what you need there. Don't need to store big packages close to your bench. That's great. And also in the navigation, you find um, a button for the for the plan for the whole um, um, floor. Exactly, exactly. Here you see this is the whole uh, uh, lab floor. So this is where we entered the cell culture we looked at and we just took a walk around here and looked at the vending machine and are back here. Exactly. So um, I would say we can, um, there are no further questions for the lab space at the moment. If we want, we can go through the rest of the building. Okay, excellent. Then I would uh, take you down to uh, the uh, first floor um, where we have the entrance to the co-working. So this is still a look at the um, uh, uh, the entrance area uh, from above the foyer, some work, uh, some uh, chairs appear to work um, uh, in, a, in a more relaxed area, and then you enter here the co-working uh, area um, where we have uh, desks and, uh, as I said, and meeting rooms. And one specific uh, meeting room is the uh, Flex Lab, which is like a synthesis between uh, a lab and a meeting room, um, and. Uh, Maybe, Torsten, you want to elaborate a bit on that. Yes, thank you. Um, it's formally, uh, or no, it's 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 uh, because of the, um, the, um, the, the the laboratory use. It's a laboratory, but also it it can be used uh, for a conference or something like that. And on the on the ceiling grid, you see. Um, I don't know the, the English word of it. Perhaps, uh, Alexander, you can help me. Media it's supply system. The, the like media supply one. system, yes. And uh, you could can put it down and uh, take then there the, the, the gases or um, the electricity. And um, it's it's a very flexible room. Um, the, the tables um, are with rolls. You can put it out. You can open the, um, the room. You can... You can uh, uh, installate there um, some of the, the, the prototyping machines, for example. Um, it's yeah, it's it 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 goes through the um, the way of the flexible flexible laboratories, and it's it's one of them. Yes, uh, and exactly. It also used as a pitch room for laboratory things. Yeah, we've we've used it for all kinds of different uh, things. Also, as a as a studio to record pitches, um, to try out uh, equipment. Uh, so, yeah, a very flexible use uh, that's that's possible there. Um, now, 
when we enter the the uh, the co-working space uh, you pass the the team offices here um, and then uh, enter a small lounge area here with lockers again available to everyone meeting rooms um, and you see the architectural idea of lots of glass and lots of visibility um, uh, for everyone co-working uh, here with the desk where you can just use to to start working and co-working um, the uh, a kitchen um, here a cafe um, actually in all the memberships there's a, a, a coffee flat rate included which is uh, quite helpful and quite important so again rooms to foster uh, exchange and interaction that is what we have uh, have here as well uh, and then again further meeting rooms um, you look here uh, printing facilities and uh, to the side everything you would need in a, in a co-working um, and here again, meeting room, telephone booth, um, more offices, uh, uh, more desks. So for all kinds of different uh, working activities, you can you can find your space there. And as I see the time is just up, just a quick look at the... Um, uh, at the uh, Makers Factory um, on the ground floor. Um, you to share so this is um, where we uh, have all the uh, 3d printers and the uh, prototyping uh, machinery that you can use um, on the different workshop area. here you see those uh, media columns actually come down providing power or compressed air uh, same that we have in the uh, in the flex lab uh, and variety of machinery here from laser cutter to uh, uh, 3D printers, uh, a small mill electronics workshop. So you can do lots of uh, different things to build prototypes uh, up to uh, up to quality to get a CE certificate uh, up to there. That's what already has happened here. Um, and do you um, do I also need a driver license for these machines? Uh, same, same story here. Um, we give um, some classes and some courses um, here to learn the tricks and trade on how to work with them. Um, uh, uh, for some, obviously, for uh, uh, to 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 operate a mill to not uh, uh, harm yourself, you would need a bit more training. But most of the three D printers are quite intuitive uh, and uh, and easy to use. So, if I'm a startup and I want to to build a new high tech Prothesis, for example, with sensors, electric, and 3D components, I could do that there. You can do that, and that has been done already. Uh, we have uh, startups uh, doing all kinds of different things, up to uh, even building a, 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 a real big uh, version, printing version of the molecules they're working at. They can hold in a hand to show investors, uh, for example. Up to that, uh, you can do um, uh, in the Maker's Factory. And what materials uh, can you machine? Uh, wood and metal and plastic and can you say you, something? You, you name it. Exactly that. And so yeah. all kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, different uh, different things. Obviously, um, uh, for three D printing, you use some kind of uh, polymer, but for um, uh, for all the rest, uh, the the milling and also the laser cutting can be metal, can be wood, uh, can be all kinds of different materials. Whatever is That's needed. great, and and we see all the tables. They have wheels, so everything is um, flexible. So you can mm -hmm. arrange small workbenches and big a big line if you have something very big, <laughs> uh, for example. It's also very very flexible. Exactly, very flexible, and also for example, it's used uh, at the uh, Gesundheits Campus. The the, the training, uh, uh, for example, their classes on uh, design thinking are done in the makers factory because it gives the, the proper environment to just try things out and uh, uh, be flexible there. And um, I, I would add, especially in this room or for this room, um, this room and, and the room behind it, uh, you see the the, the door open, um, There there's a laboratory, uh, um, a real laboratory behind that. And also the makers factory could be used as a laboratory in because of, of former uh, requirements, um, the possible or possibility is, is there. Mm -hmm. So with that then, yeah, we are through. So in general, um, Jan, perhaps a question to you: um, Where's the startup's favorite place to meet, relax, exchange idea? Is is there something? 
Um, to be honest, uh, no, because it really depends on 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 where you are. Obviously, the 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 cafe, the kitchen is always uh, is always a popular place. But also, especially when the weather is nice, um, the area around us. Um, in the uh, uh, in the Sartorius quartier uh, is is quite nice, um, and uh, there's always lots of traffic on the uh, table football, um, which okay. we have on the on the ground floor. Yeah. And how many startups are at the Life Science Factory currently? Uh, we currently have uh, eight startups uh, using the uh, um, uh, being physically with us, but we have over sixty uh, startups uh, in our community. Okay, and I, if I have a really great idea, what do I have to do? Just knock the door and, and say, Jan, hello, I'm here. I want to start. Uh, yeah, basically as easy as that. Yeah, just uh, just give us a call or shoot us an email and uh, we'll, we'll have a chat. What is it that you need? What can we provide? And uh, when do you want to start? Okay, cool. And do you want uh, to say something about the, the costs? Um, if I want to rent the lab space, including makers, everything, the whole package? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the whole... Is it depending on, on something? No, though, uh, the uh, the uh, all-inclusive uh, lab membership, so as you said, that, that covers all the rest and the uh, um, and access to the, to the lab and to the functional labs, that is 2,300 euros per month per bench. So I get a bench with all the access rights for 2,300 euros per month. Okay. And if I would not have the money for that, I have to, to look in the network. Is there an investor or some, someone who could help me? Exactly that. And we can help with that as well. Um, uh, or also see there's different uh, support programs, uh, um, public funding. So all kinds of different activities. And we have some, some hints there as well. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, a question to you, Thorsten. What kind of strategy do you recommend to the users during the period of the planning of the labs when the real conditions are not established yet? Yeah. Uh, based on, on our experience, um, we, we prefer um, to, to install 100% of, um, of the, um, the, um, the, the, the supply. Yeah, because um, then there are the lines are fixed, and and the the space is um, is filled. If you don't need the supply, you can you can uh, um, uh, take it out of function. Yeah, but but um, it's it's every every time it's easier to to take installations out of of the operation. Um, if, um, if if they aren't needed, um, then to to add it on on a um, on a um, or, or after a ended uh, construction. Yeah. Um, so we we had to um, to to argue with the, the the client with the users at the beginning. What kind of uh, media supply do you need? We um, we planned it and we realized it on the building. And then you can, with, our, with, with flexible uh, um, uh, connections, you can uh, get it on, on every point of the, um, of the laboratory or you don't need it. But add something um, after the, the construction, it, it's uh, during the operations, yeah, it's uh, nearly impossible. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Jan, to, uh, for you a question. Um, how is Sartorius involved in the life science factory? Um, so we are in, uh, initiated by Sartorius. Um, um, the idea was, was actually uh, born when uh, Sartorius, as I said, moved uh, out of its former uh, ground. So what should happen here? And it should be more than just a supermarket and some uh, um, some. Um, uh, apartments, um, but really some of the Sartorius DNA should have been left here uh, in terms of uh, uh, starting business uh, uh, and starting companies in the life sciences. So Sartorius initiated us um, and uh, uh, we're financed through uh, the uh, state of Lower Saxony uh, and also uh, Sartorius has, uh, has a share in, uh, in, in what we do. Okay, 
thanks a lot, uh, Jan, and thanks a lot, Thorsten, for, for your time. I think this is a great example, the Life Science Factory, for combining um, really great architecture, inspiring atmosphere, highly flexible spaces. I can start small and grow step by step, have um, really mentoring and programs and and other founders and um, yeah for exchange and so I think this is really a great place and a place where magic happens so um, big success for the future Jan and um, for the audience I hope uh, you learned a lot from this amazing project and our experts um, if you missed the live event in in the past for example Roche Accelerator Wellbeing Labs and others you can watch it on our website also this session we we have recorded that and in one or two weeks we will have it on youtube channel and on our website you can forward that to to uh, colleagues and others and our next lab cafe will start at the 5th of april and the topic is green lab certifications compass to reduce resources and my guests will be Dr. Kerstin Hermut Kleinschmidt from NEOP Sustainability Consulting. Um, the next guest is James Cornelli, the CEO of My Green Lab from the US, and Christiane Glanzmann, Global Expert Laboratory Workplace Strategy from Roche. So the next session will be green. And thanks a lot for watching, and see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.